Hello, welcome to the first iHeart Android video series entitled What It Means to Have an Android Phone. This video series will be divided in a couple videos. The first video will be talking about the Android ecosystem and kind of what it means to have an Android device and what kind of services that kind of come with having an Android device. Um, and we'll talk a little about the Google Cloud and how you can kind of make the most of it, you know, so you can always stay connected no matter what device you're on, where you are. So first thing is, chances are when you first turned on your Android phone, it prompted you to sign into a, a Google account or a Gmail account. And um, if uh, you've done so, great. If not, I, I would suggest you take the time to create a Gmail account because that's pretty much, you know, the engine of the phone. Uh, to do so, you just simply hit the menu button. You can go to settings, and then under accounts and sync, we can hit add account, and then you can go hit Google. And here, it can you can either sign into your Google account that you already have, or you can create one. So once you have created your Google account or sign in you can now start using these Google services. So some examples of the Google services that you can use are Google Calendar, you can upload your photos to Google, you can you know of course use it for email and Gmail, you can back up and sync all your contacts and actually that more or less happens by default without you having to set anything up. So for example if I were to go to my Gmail account right now I could find my entire phone book there or anything I do um, in the calendar or search history or anything like that will pop or it will appear in my Google account whether I go on the website or on the phone or if I log into my account on a tablet or even even on my Google TV okay so now I'm going to show you guys an example of uh, how these Google services are integrated so if you sign into your Google account through uh, the web portal, uh, you're, depending on where you sign in from, either Gmail or from Google Plus or from wherever, you'll be greeted by you know, the default page here. And you can see on the top, you have a bar that has basically the links to your uh, Google services. So you have, of course, your Google Plus, your Gmail, calendar, documents, photos, etc. So, um, an email, of course, that you get going, outgoing, will always sync here to your Gmail. But uh, also in Gmail, your contacts from your phone book or from wherever your Google uh, account is signed into will sync to um, Gmail. So, if you uh, click here where it says mail and hit contacts, this is where all your contacts would appear. Now, I don't have my phone to set to sync with the iHeart Android Gmail account so uh, nothing's going to show up but anything that you would have favorited or in groups or anything like that would uh, automatically appear here and it would um, stay that way no matter where you uh, sign in your Gmail account to so if you had a tablet or an iPhone or something else your uh, contacts would sync automatically to that device now, uh, let me show you an example of how quick and how easy these services integrate. So, if I hit Calendar here, because of course Android uses Google Calendar, let's say uh, today I want to set uh, an appointment. Cool, new calendars. For 3 o'clock, we'll call this test1234 calendar is correct and we just hit save okay there it is saved on my Google calendar here let's go ahead and see if it shows up oh look at that I already have a calendar notification test one two oh you know it's past three o'clock so that's probably why but if you hit calendar there it appears right there so that's a good example how you know, your Google services are all integrated. This is the cloud. Now, of course, if I had music, I could sync that as well from my desktop or from my phone to my Google account. Um, 
Google has a desktop software that allows you to um, to do so. Um, so if you type in music.google.com, you would be greeted by this page, and this is where you can get the um, where you can upload files from iTunes, Windows Media Player. I mean, one of the most common things people ask is how can I sync my iTunes to my Android phone? This is the easiest and best way to do it. Now, of course, if you have a limited data plan, since this does use internet, it might be a little tough. However, you can download your songs over Wi-Fi and keep them permanently on your device. So, um, if you're ever at home or at a friend's house or a Starbucks, you can download your songs from there to your phone so you don't have to worry about using your internet connection as long as you're on Wi-Fi. All right, next I'd like to talk about something that you will probably be spending a lot of your time on, I know I do, and that's the Android market. Now, the Android market is not only a place to get applications, but you can also get music, books, and movies, too. Um, right now, I'm logged into the web browser version of the Android market through my Google account, and it's pretty cool because I can download and install things to my phone from the Android market, no matter where I am. If my phone is a thousand miles away from me and I'm on my laptop and I said you know what I want to download the newest version of Angry Birds right now before I forget to my phone no problem so all you do is you come up here to the search bar and we type angry and of course before we can even say Angry Birds it shows up so here we are so we'll show you here whether you have the apps installed or purchased or whether you like to install them. So let's go ahead and install the classic version of Angry Birds. Actually, before we do that, I want to make sure that this app is a good app. I want to make sure that people are giving it good reviews and I can trust this app. So before we even consider installing it, let's go ahead and click on it. And here you're greeted by the app application page. And you can see here that they have over 1 million downloads, which is they actually grew 200,000 in the last day or two. And over here you can see overview, user reviews, what's new, permission. So overview gives you a nice little description on what the app is. Um, usually developers will post a video um, explaining the game or the app or what have you. And of course down further you can read the reviews, what people say. I love it. It's addicting. It's just plain fun. And what's new just shows you what uh, what uh, was recently updated in the newest version of the application. And here's an important one too you can check out. It shows you what permissions uh, the application can uh, access. So for example, this one uses your location. So it uses the cellular network to approximate where you are. Um, this doesn't mean this doesn't necessarily mean they use this application to you know track where you are, but the app, the game might you know have some sort of location based feature like um, like it might tell you the weather or it might you know show you where what restaurants are around you and of course it needs to know where you are and of course you can specify not to use location in the settings of the application or game. And of course, it tells you a little bit more. So, okay, I think uh, I can trust this app maker. So I'm going to go ahead and install it again. And here it will ask you which device to install. Now, me being a phone whore, I have a whole list of devices here I can install to. But I'm going to choose my current phone, which is the Droid Bionic. So I'm going to go ahead and hit install. And okay. So now if I grab my phone here power it on. You can see here, let's go ahead and focus in. You can see that Angry Birds is installing as we speak. And actually we still have navigation turned on here. Let's go ahead and exit that. And Let's go ahead and so it's installed. Fantastic and should appear in our app drawer. There it is.
Angry Birds. You see, it's very easy, very simple to install applications from the web browser. In fact, I sometimes prefer it than just going through my phone. But just to kind of be thorough here, I can show you if I hit Android Market here. There's my last app I downloaded. A uh, cool feature is, let's say you uh, your phone breaks, you get a warranty replacement, or you um, buy a brand new phone or something like that, and you sign back in your Gmail account. Everything, of course, comes back. It even starts installing all your most recent downloaded apps. Now, also, I can always hit the menu button, and I can always hit My Apps, and that will show you the uh, a recent list of applications you've installed and of course it shows you if you have any updates here as well but you'll also be notified at the top of your status bar if you have any updates. Alright so now I showed you a little bit about uh, integrating your Google account with things you might do such as calendars or music on the computer with your Android phone or any other device that can sign into a Google account. Let's talk a little bit about other services that you get when you invest into an Android device. Um, so my favorite and probably one of the ones you'll be using most frequently, of course, is Google Maps. Now Google Maps, you know, does more than just finds your location and um, you know helps you look for places to eat. It uh, has a bunch of other really cool features that I'll show you that a lot of people tend to overlook or don't even realize their phone can do. Um, some of my favorite ones, though, if you click this little guy here, which it looks like a bunch of paper stacked up on top of each other, you get different type of views. So if you want to see what the traffic is like, it'll tell you green is good, of course, yellow is kind of slowed down, and red is bad. And it looks like there's a bit of traffic here, but I will know to avoid those roads. And of course, if you click this again, you can clear the map of anything you might have selected. Another cool one, and this is one I use often, is the satellite view, which of course shows you the um, Google Earth type of view. Give a second to load here. Here we go. Here we are. And of course, you can stalk your neighbor. Another cool thing is, um, let's say you want to go to, we'll say, here, let's go to Stanford Shopping Center. So you want to go to the Stanford Shopping Center, so you can click this. So not only does it give you a little information about it, you can of course call the business here, um, you can go back to the map. You can get directions, we'll talk about that in a second. Also, you can see if there's any special Google offers. This is a new uh, service they have, which is kind of like Groupon, where you can get uh, discounted uh, coupons for things, or sometimes you can get you know uh, special deals, and depending, of course, if the, the business is partnered with them. And, of course, you can read reviews. You can review here. You can check in to your, with your Google+. Plus. Now let's show you a little bit about the directions. So directions is pretty cool because you can either A, get car directions, bus directions, bicycle directions, or walking directions, but I don't know why you'd want to walk about 45 miles. Now this little blue guy here will actually give you turn-by-turn -turn directions. So you'll have a, a, a lady, a very robotic lady, speak to you. So if I tap this, it automatically goes into Google navigation. Head south on Flat Court North toward Valley Trails Drive. Then turn left onto Valley Trails Drive. So it's pretty cool, um, and it works fairly well, and it's very quick at rerouting, of course. And um, if you can see down here, this is the estimated time of arrival, and green means that there is fairly a little amount of traffic. So uh, looks like it'd be a good time to go. All right, so the last thing I want to talk about is voice commands. Now, voice commands is very similar to what you might find with Siri on the iPhone. However, it's not quite robust on the stock experience. But you can download applications that replace the stock voice command software. And some of the ones you can download are way better than Siri. But we'll talk more about that in the next video, which is 
about customizing and making Android a more personal experience. So to access the voice command software, all you have to do is hit the magnifying glass or hold the magnifying glass, or you can just go ahead and uh, access voice search in the application drawer. Now, some of the things you can say with with the voice commands are like navigate to a place, you can call a place, you can send a text message to a person. So I'm getting kind of hungry and I kind of want my girlfriend to make me a sandwich when I get home. So I can just tap this and say, send text message to Rachel Donald, hey, I'm hungry, can you make me a sandwich? Question mark, smiley face. There it is, ready to go. Now let's go ahead and send that because I wasn't joking. And there it is. Pretty cool, right? Another cool one is, of course, the navigation. So let's say we want to go back to that Stanford Shopping Center we were, we were navigating to earlier. I could just go ahead and hit this again. Navigate to Stanford Shopping Center. And there it is. You can wait for the dial to finish, or you can just go hit. You can go ahead and hit go. And there we are. And of course, you can tap one of those, and it'll start navigating. So that about wraps up my video explaining a little bit about the Android ecosystem and how you can, you know, keep everything connected. Um, it really is a powerful, powerful tool you have, and it it's a very underrated feature in the it, that people tend to overlook on an Android device. Now the next video I'll be posting will be more about customization and making Android a more personal experience. For example, you can see that my phone is heavily customized and it does not look anything like what you might find on a stock experience. Mind you that every manufacturer puts you know their own skin on an Android device. However, that can't stop you from having a really personal and fun experience with your device. So for example, we can change the icons, we can you know, add widgets, um, replace applications with maybe better ones, such as the voice command software on the phone. So stay tuned for that video and many more to come. Please rate, please subscribe, and feel free to send any questions you have to the iHeartAndroid Gmail, which is iHeartAndroidVideos at gmail.com. And I'll do my best to answer any questions you have, as well as questions you might post down in the comments below. Thank you guys for watching and stay tuned.